because everybody else of the session speakers will come here in front. And I hope that you all have something to ask them. I don't tell this is here. Oh, on your door. Museum uh, as an exhibition chain. 
For example, our experience allows a collection mobility. It's very real and simple. It depends on finances, but for museums, it's very important. And in this, how to say, network, uh, you can mention also ICOM or the Latvian National Committee later museums. Another one we hope is the diplomacy, cultural diplomacy. And uh, of course it's a uh, cooperation uh, for the co connection with embassies and uh, this, uh, the anniversaries or how to promote special festivals and uh, it's not 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 uh, not museum policy to participate, but it's uh, preferable to participate in this. Yeah, you can mention, for example, this Metronome uh, Metronome uh, in France, it was a for, uh, yeah, it's like organizing and you have to find place in another museum for two years. It's, it's uh, very complicated. Other one level, it is still deep. And it's a question about the research in museum. It's very important now to understand because you know this scientific or research, and is it possible to organize the divisions in our research now? Uh, so it's uh, maybe shows for diplomacy, or it's really deep research. So it's uh, how close to go back to this deep research on, on the base of research to organize this project, because it's very the, you know, interesting and discoveries and uh, also publications, not only catalogs, but, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's another one, uh, level of uh, collaboration. And how to put together is of uh, Disneyland, Disneyland and uh, Temple. It's, uh, it's like a communication between this scientific work and to show, to do this visible, this scientific work through the tradition. Thank you. Thank you, Gita. Any other questions and comments? Yeah, please. Yes, please. Yes, I have a question for Jeremy. Mm -hmm. uh, you have told a uh, very interesting uh, mm -hmm. a couple of very interesting stories and detective stories about artists, uh, Latvian artists. And I wonder, you tell me stories. I mean, here we enjoy them. She's not enjoyed them a lot. And do you tell them it's popular on Twitter and how people as historians, specialists, react to them? I mean, do you feel like you uncovered them to the world? What's their reaction with them? Do the historians know uh, what these artists did really relate to how people live with them? That's well, all these patterns, the boring things and so on. So do they accept something from them? Or is it again? Well, it's, it's, it's a very good question. Um, I, I have to say, um, it's a very disappointing answer. People aren't interested. Uh, I've been banging the drum for many, many years. And uh, if anything, it, it's got worse, I think, recently. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased by all the initiatives heard of that, uh, but they're not reaching us, and they're not reaching the way the system is set up in the United Kingdom. Uh, it's not set up to accept Baltic work. For example, I, I can give a talk about it, and it will be treated as exotic. It will be treated as, oh, that's Jeremy, he's interested in minor things. Uh, not first ranking things. It, it, there's always that prejudice, uh, even from the most liberal minded people, uh, those that are regarded as far left, shall we say. Uh, it's very depressing. And uh, the system is all about getting your articles in into certain indexes into certain journals and if you don't publish in those you have no audience that's what people think so you have to kind of do subversive tactics and you have to go through students because students are the only hope so 
I have to do it in my second year uh, lectures, and then the students who come from all around the world, they are the ones where they'll pick up, there is, pick up and say, that's interesting. Can we have more, more than that? But that's the only, I can only filter it in can, subversively so that my colleagues don't really know. Uh, it's very depressing. Recently, I was looking for, an ex and it's not just Baltic, by the way, I was looking for an external examiner of a PhD student of mine who was graduating after six years of writing his PhD, and he's been writing on Russian constructivism, uh, Russian avant-garde work, as represented in British exhibitions between 1930s and 2006, 2009. Um, and he wrote this, this very, very interesting uh, PhD. I went through the web pages of all the art history departments in Britain looking for an external examiner who could come as the opponent to his thesis uh, because he'll get examined very soon. Every department I went through, first of all, there's no Russian, only in two places. Uh, Secondly, if you want Baltic, no chance, zero chance. Uh, and that means not just south of the Baltic, but Scandinavian too, I must say. I'm regarded as the Scandinavian person on the, in my department because I'm regarded as the periphery person, not the center. And this, this is, I mean, it's just horrible. But we have to just fight our own little battles and persevere, I think. And, and actually it is through the voices of uh, your journals getting a higher notice, maybe, I mean, how many exhibitions of, of the Kinto uh, show actually came to the UK? <laughs> they are very resistant. 1979. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because it, it and that, represents the English language kind of community, I'm afraid. Uh, so, it's difficult, I'm sorry to say. But I'm always optimistic. So we must keep on trying. And it is possible to publish, uh, you know, a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Another question? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you have a suggestion like, for you and for, for, for I was thinking, you know, we, our, our art history is usually a uh, construct, yes, and we are constructing the narratives of art history. The narrative that we were constructing usually was the kind of narrative, national narrative, yes. Now, when we are in the European Union, we are told by European politics, you must think yourself as all the states and one all the unit which has one, one common all art history, yes. We are a little bit skeptical about that thing because we know that historically they are rather different. But anyway, they say if you want to be seen, you must be all the art history. Yes, you must be. You must think of yourself in such a well discourse. But again, what is what is all the art history and does it exist or the old? Uh, I when I was reading your abstract, I found some things about that, some notions that have it at me, but anyway, I, I don't know and I am a bit skeptical. This is what the art history or the notices. But when you were speaking today, uh, uh, you were speaking about Jewish artists, you know, and we have Jewish artists are the artists that unite the genius, that <laughs> uh, 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 you know, Estonians. And then we can construct really uh, the art history which is Jewish and which the world of the world is going to be accepted. This is a good idea. Uh, uh, let's do it. I have a question that I have actually, uh, which might a bit relate to uh, Jeremy's point, but um, you, you started off with this interesting conflict that there are these large volumes of art history written where no media is mentioned or no media is usually neglected. While at the same time, by now, um, media, uh, new media has become very common. We carry at least two gadgets with us all the time. And um, so, 
but but there's you know if you start from the 90s uh, you come to nowadays but there's this interesting breaking point so is it somehow reflected in the artist work uh, I, I have in mind that shift in hardware where at some point hardware becomes really common that we all have these gadgets whereas when all these artists started in the 19, mid 1990s it was all very exotic, very scarce. So that you know that hard it was all about you know getting these devices to do media where now we have all these edges around us that we hardly ever think of them as sources for art making. So actually uh here, what was exactly the question? So so we, we, to address or is, is, it, is the shift in hardware becoming very commonplace? Is it reflected in the production of these, of these artists? Anyway, how, how did the artist re react to this change, big change at some point in the early 2000s when suddenly you know, we, we all have computer, carry computers in our pockets? Yes, uh, to, to answer it so very simply, you, you can say you can see trend uh, to research that uh, digital media artists are much more trying to establish themselves at uh, institutions and uh, to research and delve deep in, in some topic in biology, for instance. Bioart is very trendy now. Not because it's strange, but it's kind of new field where uh, new technology can see quite a lot more. Uh, because you can really kind of build new uh, living forms or, or almost kind of new living organisms. Um, uh, but I would say um, uh, all this time, with, let's say the last 25 years or even more, um, you can see kind of arc uh, where technology was growing, multiplying, and becoming kind of more and more ubiquitous. And uh, the first phase is always where artists are trying to adapt technology to uh, uh, to, to to be to be excited about uh, how this technology kind of reorganizes visual and auditive as well in a way. All new technologies which arrive in culture, they are becoming like a kind of new glasses through which you are looking uh, at the culture and at yourself as well, and at this technology as well. So when this technology is everywhere, where, uh, so to say, your glasses, uh, technology-based glasses, are everybody is wearing them, everybody is uh, looking uh, well through them. Uh, then here's the question, uh, where next, where artists should go? And I think, uh, then what I mentioned, they go um, deep into some subjects, into topics, uh, to explore some different country reality. They get access uh, to it. I mean, biological matters, they are uh, very interested now. But Still, there is a kind of other school of uh, digital media artists uh, who's, um, who started in the mid 90s. They uh, despise it or they don't like it much because it's wet and you should get your hands dirty if you are dealing with it. And you should have a light lab, for instance, some bio biology or chemistry lab to perform all uh, experiments with. Uh, in between digital technology and biology uh, and it, it makes it much more expensive and I would even say that uh, uh, new media labs which were uh, very popular in the mid 90s uh, kind of multimedia classes with computers which were, which were very exclusive then. so you can say that biology labs now uh, they became more this kind of new media I have a question to Nürnberg, since the year was done, so many students. So perhaps you can say some words about the language. I mean, you, you presented the, the actually very broad landscape of, of, of institutions that you provide and are interested in, in researching in, in, in this area here. 
now, but I'm interested. I mean, is it um, is English also right, or uh, are everything you can apply is only uh, in German, or or for German-speaking people, students? So apply in another language. Yeah, I mean, we, we also take applications in English and in German. And um, yeah, this, this is a question with the language. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, when we have um, our conferences, we uh, our language is mostly English or German. We try to, to speak both uh, languages because we also I think uh, English is the uh, most spoken uh, language um, in the scholarly community, but also German is very important. I think if you work in areas which um, deal with uh, German history, and uh, so that's why we have this new stipend, this uh, Böckler stipend, um, that uh, you get um, have the possibility to. To improve your German much better, but to improve your German, that you can go to the archives and the libraries in Germany and, and that you can speak, uh, that you can read uh, the literature, um, which is uh, in a certain area of only in, in German. So that, that's the, the idea behind. But uh, on the other hand, you know, we are completely open you know, for English communication. Only a problem with uh, uh, the smaller languages uh, is for everybody. It's always a difficult to live in a small country and um, only a few people speak that language. You always have to open your mind and, and learn another language which, which is spoken uh, in other countries as well. It, it would be English. Um, and uh, I mean, it's very important to communicate and you have to find a way. So we do that with uh, German or English. And that's why we have here a conference also in English. And we are all foreigners here. You know. <laughs> Certain exceptions, of course. <laughs> but uh, maybe this is also a chance because we're all foreigners. We all, all speak in a foreign language. You know. This is actually a nice idea. So communication is very important. That's the base for everything and for research. Scholarly exchange is important. So uh, yeah, uh, train your language skills. I can say. <laughs> Any other questions now? Then I think the pleasant smell of coffee is inviting us <coughs> to have a hot drink in this rather cold room and to go on communicating uh, in this work. Uh,